This is the Sam Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole. But the real star today show are the Thrustmaster TLCM pedals. This is their new load cell and magnetic, magnetic pedal set that is now available. And this is really a game changer coming from Thrustmaster. Their pedals have been the Achilles heel of their wonderful lineup of wheels to choose from. So the cool thing about these pedals is they are standalone pedals. So you can use them via USB. So right now I'm going to do some testing. I know we're a little unorthodox docs today. I'm not really looking at the camera. This is really a, a first impressions, first thought. Now, I have already changed out the springs to the spring set that I like better. I've already adjusted the spacing of the pedals. So we have made some adva advances from right out of the box. You can find out what I've done, see all the tuning stuff in a different video that I have available. But right now, I just want to see what they feel like on track. This is a $200 pedal set. It is available now via Amazon. You'll have a link down there in the description of the show. And uh, again, these can be used USB, uh, you know, directly in and work with any wheel that you want. So today I'm using it with my Sim Experience AccuForce wheel. So it'll work any way you want. Or you can plug it directly into a Thrustmaster wheelbase, pretty much everything other than the T500. So this is a great upgrade for anybody who's sitting on a TSXW or a TGT or a TSPC. If you're on a T150 or a T300, it'll work for you as well. $200, total re totally reasonable price for a load cell upgrade or a load cell pedal set. So they are made of plastic in terms of the casing is plastic. The pedal arms are metal and it does have a few adjustments like spring tension and where you can put the pedal faces that make it a little more tunable or comfortable for you. So I have them all mounted up, ready to go. Let's get on on track and see what kind of results we get. Again, we're comparing, you know, this is a, a Hall Effect sensor, but this is just a spring, you know, on your clutch and, and on your gas. And, and even in the case of high-end pedals, about the same amount of, uh, not the same amount, but same type of uh, a mechanism. It's the brake pedal where we see a big difference compared to the feel of a normal Thrustmaster or Logitech pedal set. So uh, normally a brake pedal will look and feel like that. And now we have much more resistance, much more uh, a, a balancing point of, of pressure that it is, in my opinion, a lot easier to get used to. So anyway, let's get out on track. And uh, actually, really quick, I've gone through the calibration in... Um, there's calibration tool. So we adjusted our dead zones and we adjusted the amount of pressure that we want uh, in terms of the default. Now we're going into iRacing and we're going to calibrate just to make sure we're getting everything. And our force feedback, our force factor is at zero, which for a load cell or hydraulic is what you want. So, all right, this is just uh, a few minutes of driving. I'll talk about what I'm feeling while I'm driving and hopefully it comes out really cool. Sorry if I keep hitting the wire against the microphone, by the way. You're hearing some extra vibration. I have a quake shaker. That's the shaker making noise. You can identify that now. I have my headphones on, so you're not gonna hear the game sounds. You can see. Uh, actually, I don't have game sounds. Where are my sounds going right now? Ah, that thing is on crazy mode right now. Uh, this happens to me periodically. Uh, whoa, now it's showing me everything. There we go. All right, so we're not focusing on the wheel. We're not focusing on the car. We're focusing on the brake pedal and how it feels with the pedal set in general, to be honest with you. So with that, as we're rolling out of pit lane, I can tell you that the gas pedal is still very springy. Now I, you know, it really comes down to what are you comparing it to? So I would say that this feels a lot like the gas pedal tension and travel that you would have found on the original Thrustmaster pedal sets. Like other than the pedal arm and pedal face being really nice, it's it's uh, pretty very similar to the same kind of feel. Um, amount of throw is about that much, it feels. I'll give you an exact measurement in the review process, but um, it's an adequate amount, but not an extreme amount of throw out of that gas pedal. It's very smooth. 
and it hits a, a soft hard stop, we're gonna call it. So I'm not feeling like a metal on metal clack when I reach the full throw of the gas pedal. I'm feeling like a very hint of a rubber bumper of some sort, making it so it's comfortable, to, but it's very clear that you've reached the end of the pedal travel. All right, let's look over to the brake pedal now. The brake pedal, now I'm using the two red springs, which are the stiffest, and I'm still using the silver spring in the middle, which gives me just this little bit. You can see right there, I can get about a third of the brake without hitting, oh, that's gonna be a wreck, sorry. I gotta pay attention a little bit. I always save the car. So as I'm so showing you here, so I can get about this much distance where I'm just on that light string spring for the most part. And then from there, there's a progressive point and you can feel a little more pressure build up right away. So for light scrubbing action, like this turn here at Brands Hatch, where you just need a real light hint of braking, you don't wanna overdo it. You know you can just kind of gently touch it, use that silver spring for the most part and put a little bit less pressure on the load cell on that just brush type braking. Brands Hatch requires a lot of that kind of braking. So for example, this right hander, you might not need any brake. You might want just enough brake to set the nose down, but not actually do a whole lot to slow the car down. It's gonna give you that kind of braking. I'm feeling that kind of, again, that initial touch, that light scrub of the brake feeling is really nice with this combination of springs I've got in there more heavy braking. Now what I'm really looking for in a load cell pedal over a, a potentiometer under heavy braking, that ability to like really quickly sense that moment of lockup and release the brake and not just be to a point where it's like, I, when you get it in that timing in your mind where like that pressure point, not distance, that pressure, how hard do I press is so much easier to, to duplicate. Now, comparing it to a high, high-end pedal set. You know, this is still very, very light pedal, but definitely into the world of load cell where we are getting that really good balance. It's again, a balance. I can really, it's like immediately, it's like it, you don't have to take many turns or many braking zones to really find that pressure point where you're like, that's as much as I can do before it's gonna give me lock up. Whoa, whoa, throttle pedal. The other thing, I was able to space those pedals, so being a left foot breaker like I am, I'm able to get a little bit of distance between the gas and brake, that's nice, especially for anyone running a center post design. Light scrub of the brake, light scrub of the brake. Let's try to be a little more smooth with that throttle output, judging that distance and spring tension. It's definitely light and I am in heavy shoes, so it's, you know, in socks, we'll have to try this in socks, I suppose, as well. Heavier braking. Oh, I didn't get enough, but you can see no lockup, no lockup. And it is easy to lock up the tires in this car, so we are doing a good job. Really good at that, really good feeling of pressure as the car's slowing, building up pressure. Really good to be able to get the right braking pressure there into that corner number two. You don't want to overdo corner there. You'll actually create understeer off braking. Light scrub of braking, light trail brake. Good feeling. Oh, we were able to, I would like a teeny bit more distance in that throttle pedal, but that's because I have an extremely long amount of throw in my Rickmo tech. It's certainly enough to work with. Whoa, 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 whoa. We overdid it, we overdid it. Yep, we're gonna need a car for that one. Okay, okay, so. I wanna see. Yeah, you can see how that silver spring is compressing 
and giving us that much travel. Let's look at our calibration real quick. So let's look at our pedal travel in game. This is what the game is seeing looking there at pedals. So we would go about that much. We're getting about 10, 15% under some very light feel on the brake pedal. And then you can see how much more pressure it takes to actually activate it to full. All right. Now, when we're getting to those braking zones and we're turning for apex and we're trail braking, we're coming in hot on the brake and able to reduce the pressure as we come to apex. And that modulation being so easy to do because it's pressure, it's fighting your foot back a little bit. It's not just a spring, you know, and trying to do it with this flappy spring, even on the gas pedal, same thing. You know, um, you can do it, but just the way the braking on the car and you're always being so sensitive to just these finite changes and getting brake lock up. So the gas, I mean the clutch pedal which I really wouldn't normally need in this car. I'm just getting the feel for it. Oop, missed shift. Okay. Kind of just playing around with some heel toe concept. Do that with a potentiometer. Oh, didn't need a downshift there. Yeah, the clutch has some punch to it. Uh, it's a light spring, but it's there. You can slap it in real nice when you're just trying to do some quick heel toe action. Oh. Whoa. All right, let's go back to normal. All right, again, Brands Hatch is a great test track for testing braking and a pedal set. Again, you have this combination of sweepers that you just maybe are doing a little again right here on this corner. Sometimes as my front tires wash out a little bit. Oh, oh, come on. Overdid it. Sometimes you just want to set that nose just a little bit, just get a little more grip. And it's like, you don't want to press too much brake. You're not trying to slow the car down as much as you are trying to load the front end. 
and that light spring tension, that ability, it's almost like a, a, a soft zone. Uh, I was going to call it a dead zone, but it's not. There's movement there. It's that soft zone uh, that you can work with. Again, it is light uh, compared to like a heavy duty set of pedals. It is substantially heavier duty than uh, a stock Thrustmaster brake. The, again, movement on the, the pedal, gas pedal, is good. You can see I have a little distance. When I was heel towing, I was able to give a little bit of brake before my foot was even going to hit that gas pedal. So that's good. Um, and then you're able to flick it out like that. My toe heel, I guess, is more what I do. I think a lot of people do it more like that. But for me, I've always been that direction, which puts a little extra strain on the foot. But uh, again, clutch pedal had good spring to it, so you could slap it in for those shifts. Uh, good spacing for a, a, a $200 pedal set. I like the way I've staggered the pedals a little further right with the gas, a little further left with the brake clutch sitting off to the left as well just to match the brakes distance away from it um again way different totally different world than a stock thrust master pedal set let's go ahead and do some more braking i want to show you one of the moments that i really this is a moment where it's like i can give thrust master credit all day long but this is really just something about a load cell versus potentiometer so here's turn one here's turn two this corner and i'm on cold tires but Getting the braking right, you're on this uphill, it makes it easy to lock up the front. You need to slow the car down enough because going wide here is terrible. And you need to get all the traction out of the braking right up until the moment of, of lock up. And those are the moments that are, to me, are really critical about a load cell because it gives you that ability to just make super fine, quick adjustments in relation to how you feel the car is doing. You're so sunk into the game. Trail braking here. It's a trail braking corner. You just don't want to do too much. You give just a hint too much brake and it makes the front end of the car get understeer and the car tracks wide. Here, we're not going to do anything. I really, this setup can just cruise through this corner right, when we're on warm. Again, at Brands Hatch, over braking is as bad as under braking because it'll cause understeer and have you miss the corner. Same thing, it's just a little hint of the brake, and that's so nice with this pedal set. Heavy braking, oh, over modulated there, but that's what I'm talking about that ability to find that braking point to its maximum. Medium brake. medium hard break oh now this is the corner i'm talking about this is the one that we can really focus on heavy braking don't want lock look at that effective braking actually slowed the car down too much that's what i'm talking about whoa 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 Whoa, early, early. All right, here's our braking zone, heavy braking. Got it done early, got it done early, nicely done. Medium hard, nice. I'm adapting to it very quickly coming off of my hydraulic pedal even. Oh, we're doing a great job of breaking into two. We could even push our braking zone back. That's nice. Oh, I've been overdoing turn three this whole time.
I didn't need to slow down that much. All right, I am now to the point where I am attacking about, I mean, this is my first drive on these pedals. And uh, I'm already to that point of like 95% confidence. Right there, that that was the moment. Oh, that was awesome. That was awesome. Right on the verge of lockup. Ninety six percent confidence. Ah! All right, all right, but we we were really moving. <clears throat> we were really moving there. Um, really, I mean, 97, 98% confident now. Uh, getting that threshold breaking just on the money. Turns two, uh, I can't remember the number, there's a corner. Turn two, that uphill corner, getting it every single time. Uh, the the final two corners of the track, that left-hander downhill, getting it every time. Um, really, really getting that threshold and backing off for apex, that uh, threshold breaking into trail breaking all the way to apex. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually pretty blown away uh, by a $200 pedal set. I mean, for, for you know, most people who are sitting on, a, on, on an AccuForce wheel, and, and or other direct drive wheel, chances are they've already upgraded to a, a high-end set of pedals to match. Um, it is not an obscene thought to match these together, by the way. So at 200 bucks, I mean, I'm pretty blown away, honestly, at the stiffness. You can feel the stiffness of that metal arm. You can feel these metal face plates, and it's got a good solid feel. So despite the casing, being made of plastic, you can see it actually flexing the metal of my R seat, which is a very stout rig. So we are talking about a good amount of pressure now that I'm on these red springs. Um, I, again, that, that light scrub effect was outstanding. That balancing point under threshold braking was outstanding. And, and 
you know, honestly, it's, it's impossible to beat for $200. I mean, I can say that flat out. Uh, if you're still on a spring-based pedal set, whether it be a Thrustmaster set, whether it be a non-load cell uh, version of any pedal or, or you know, whatever, these are going to be a huge, huge performance upgrade. So um, it, it's something that I've talked about on the show all the time, the importance of a, a, thro a lo load cell break. And Thrustmaster is in my first drive. Hopefully it's not just placebo effect, but in my first drive, I'm pretty blown away by how quick I was to adapt to it, how confident I was in the pedal after just a mere handful of laps, 13 laps, and I'm pretty, pretty happy. So the next thing I'm gonna test, now when we're in USB mode, it's 16 bit, and all this part will be covered in the review. We'll talk about the distances, we'll talk about the different durometers or pressures of the springs. We'll talk about the measurements and spacing and all that kind of stuff. But right now I'm talking about more of the, the practical side of things. When we're USB, it is a 16 bit connection when they're plugged in directly. Now the next thing I wanna do is act as though I am a normal Thrustmaster customer who's like, hey, I love my TSXW, now it's time to upgrade the pedals. So that's exactly how I'm gonna treat this. We're gonna to switch to the other connection and then we're gonna do another first drive, this time being in 12-bit mode, running it through a Thrustmaster wheel, which would technically make it Xbox as well. Um, I don't think I'm gonna test it on the Xbox just because I don't really have that set up in here. Anyway, that is gonna do it for this one. I know this was a little bit of an unusual show, but I wanted you to actually see what it was like from the moment of unboxing, I, mean, I did a teeny bit of driving with those white springs just to film it. I didn't even have my headphones on. It was more like just getting shots of the pedals in action. This was the first time, <coughs> excuse me, first time that I had my headphones on, my head in the game, and I was really driving for peak performance with all the settings. So I knew I wanted the spacing. I knew I wanted the heavy duty spring set. So for me, I, I, I did get them dialed in, but this was the first I really drove it and drove it to its maximum. I mean, I could race tonight on these pedals against the best of the best with, with um, at this point, 97% confidence. That's pretty awesome in a matter of 13 laps. Anyway, I'm very blown away. You can find these on Amazon Thrustmaster T LCM pedals uh, on Thrustmaster as of now, and there should be a link in the description of the show. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a different look at these. I hope you enjoyed the way we approached it. And again, you can check out our installation video, our unboxing video, and of course, our review of the Thrustmaster T LCM pedals. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.